This is HTZ Warfare. So first I'm going to explain the setup that we have here. Layers. We have the digital elevation model. And this is something you must use if you want to simulate or predict the communication between individual nodes correctly. We have the clutter. The clutter allowing you to model the urban or suburban or rural environment. Also allowing you to model the trees or vegetations, which can impact signal propagation. The image is just another layer allowing you to visualize where the locations of the nodes are. We also have pre-configured a, a propagation model, a prediction engine, in order to predict the signal, signal losses or the, the signal level between um, any two nodes. So here we're using Longley Rice propagation model, which is the NTIA point-to-point -point implementation. We set up a confidence level of 95% and a reliability of 70%. And we're assuming here we have average ground uh, type. So this propagation model would take care of uh, signal propagation prediction from one point to the other. And with the help of the digital terrain model and the clutter, the, the, the um, simulation or the uh, prediction would be more accurate. So to show you how this um, um, is playing up all together, you can run a signal um, prediction from that point to that point here. And you can see here we have the digital terrain model and the clutter. And this is the, the green, the green line is the signal propagation from that side to that side. So you can see how the signal is is behaving in response to the to the to the digital terrain um, around it. Also, quickly show you the the setup uh, for the parameters here. We have uh, this is a mission unit, so we have ten watt transmitter. This is um, an Omni antenna two point one, one sixty megahertz, five meter antenna height, and we're looking at neg hundred dBm sensitivity. We're not going to talk about all these parameters. So briefly, here we have CC. So this one, the green, the green stations, are CC, which means command control or command communication. And then we have the red, the red icons. Um, these are the mission units. So the mission units need to talk to each other, and at the same time, they need to find a way to talk back to the command control. And this is what I'm going to simulate um, in that first part of the webinar. I also modeled a vector layer for the um, for the uh, roads with a buffer of 50 or 100 meter from the roads. So let me show you. Um, use so you can see this uh, pink, this pink. Um, um, uh, the roads here. So, the, the, so this is this is buffered from the road center line, 100 meter each way. So effectively, this is my um, these are my ideal locations to deploy range extenders. So this is going to be used later on when searching for range extender. So first thing first, um, I'm going to show you how the mesh will be formed using this um, um, this setup. Multipoint servers. Connect all servers based on signal level, max distance 10 kilometers. That's it. Here you go. This is a quick report, and this is the formation of the um, of the mesh network or the manet. So you can see this network here is isolated, but it is interconnected. This network here is also isolated from the others but it is well connected as well. This machine unit here is isolated completely, has no one else to talk to. And now this one here is another another one, same story. So you can see the command control is in, in the middle. This one has a command control. This one has no command control.
Now one can easily um, set the command control here as a reference and then analyze the shortest path from any mission unit. So you can select any mission unit and you go select and you ask for shortest path. So this is based on a minimum number of hops. You can choose the, sh the, the shortest path based on visibility or you could use the shortest path uh, based on the field strengths. Uh, above threshold. Let me use the links because I already have the links. Here we go. So now the tool established the, the, the shortest path from that mission unit to that gateway. You can choose different point and repeat the process. There you go. Now if you want to uh, find, if you want to interconnect these different um, um, uh, Manet networks or clusters if you want to connect them all together We have existing function in the software To do that First you need to make sure you have coverage computed. So you really have coverage calculated from the software Second you need to use the vector polygon use vector polygon and then go with search nodes So you can specify the parameters of the node you want to use. So I'm going to use this, um, this template. You could use the uh, fast mode or you could use the slow mode, which is but more optimum, more accurate. I'm going to use fast mode for now. Create the links. No need. I already have the links created. Max distance, 10 kilometers, and now hit OK. So now the software is auto deploying range extenders in strategic locations within the polygon. So within within the, the, the roads uh, with a buffer of 50 or 100 meter from the road. Done. So here you go. You've got here the, the gray color. So the, the gray color are the range extenders, and you can see they are implemented in in the in the um, in the road buffer. So this one here, it's interconnecting one, two, three isolated clusters. Just one node is bridging these three, and here we've got one more also bridging these two clusters. Now you can establish a bridge with more interconnections, but you have to use the optimum method. So this is how easy it is to, to plan range extenders. Now it's time to show you how, how you can leverage automation and in order to achieve um, third party integration. For example, if you want to integrate the software into your own tactical platform to achieve the desired outcome with minimal uh, interaction and minimal configuration. So for this, we're going to use the um, the API, the, the, the software's API, uh, based on RESTful APIs. So this is a web uh, a web based um, API. So the idea is to to uh, execute a, a task uh, or a job remotely and get the outcome delivered to you. And let me show you straight the um, the the one potential um, use case, uh, one or one potential integration. So I'm going to show you here Google Earth as example. Google Earth Pro. So here I pre set up uh, uh, two two links. One's called Manet um, before, the other one's called Manet after. Okay, so the one before is simply pointing to the API, the API link with, with the with the specific um, key, a specific ID for that job. So you've got one before, one after. They're both not working for now because we haven't done the computation. So the idea is to get the, the simulation outcome in the in that tool in Google Earth, but it could be any other product. This is the command. Um, this is the, the the GUI or the interface where we can engage the software remotely using API. So the idea is to select the server you want to work with, and then select the job 
that you want to run. For example, I want to do a point to point analysis or I want to do possibly search node in order to connect uh, these clusters. So you can choose the job you want, select the digital terrain model you want to use from, from the server. I'm going to use the Manet and I'm going to use a VHF, UHF radio or Manet radio. And I'm going to um, select the temporary um, um, uh, record. I'm going to transmit the station parameters uh, through the API as well. I'm going to use the, the vector, the vector polygon and so on. Now, this is this is permitting you to create a sequence of jobs. So I've got job number zero, one and two. So in the first step, I'm going to run coverage prediction. Then I'm going to run search node. Uh, and then I'm going to run point to point matrix analysis. So this is point to point matrix analysis actually um, a step um, uh, before. This is the snapshot of the network before doing the search node. And this is um, this is the this is going to deliver a snapshot of the network after doing the search node. So we're going to have two networks before and after optimization. And I already uh, linked them with the with the um, with the IDs to produce the analysis correctly. So now all I have to do is um, transmit or, or send send the uh, recipe, submit recipe, and then you get a receipt, and then you can see the job is transmitted to the server. So I've got three jobs now just received on the server. Refresh. So you've got now one is running the coverage calculation. So let's go now together to the to the server and see what's happening. Here we go. So the server received the instructions and now he's computing the coverage in the background. So once this is done, it's going to move to the rest of the uh, the steps. So now you can see um, the um, the point to point matrix um, analysis, which is the, the the mesh or the manet analysis, is completed, and now he's running the search node now. Now he's trying to optimize the network. This task will take a bit of time, but this task is already ready, so we could talk about it. Now go back to Google Earth. Let's see if it is ready here as well. Well, they are linked. So if it's ready over there, it should be ready here. So this is before. Right click and then refresh the link. So now you see here is a green, which means that that it's ready. All right, so this is the, the mesh analysis. And that's with zero, uh, um, uh, zero interaction with uh, HTC, HTC Warfare. So this is the, the analysis before, is ready. Let me see if after now is completed or not. That will take a bit of time. So let me talk about this. So this is the snapshot of the, the, the Manet network before. So in, in, in this analysis, the software is producing a number of um, um, documents or number of out outcomes. So let me shut down the routing. Here we have the, the mission units, the green, the green circles here um, are the mission units and also the red. Now the red are, they are red because there is no command control they can talk to right now. These ones are green, which means they are mission units and, and also it means there is a, a command control to talk to. Same with this one here. So the green links you're looking at are all the possible RF, so all the viable RF links uh, um, possible between any two nodes. Now, now having connection here doesn't mean necessarily you're going to use it. If you click on this one, you can see what's the signal level for that link. You can see the 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 length of the link and also where is it running from to from mission unit three to mission unit seven. Now, if you click on the node itself, the node will tell you what's the node ID. It's mission unit number five. And you can see there's only one command control within reach, directly or indirectly. So there are reachable, uh, reachable CCCs are only one, which is MU1. And this is called mission unit one here. And here we have uh, uni, uni connections four. So that node has four different connections out of it. And you can see how many hops to reach the gateway. So the, the RF links are, or the green links are all the possible uh, layer one RF links. That's all the whole list. 
Now the routing, so the routing um, also are divided into multiple levels, so directly. So these are the nodes that are connecting directly to the, to the uh, command control. These are the routes for the mission units that can connect with, with one intermediate node in between. Two nodes in between. So you can see here, this one is specific for for MU9, Mission Unit 9, to Mission Unit 1, which is the uh, command control here. The, the software is calculating the shortest path. So it's using the green, the green as a backhaul. Okay, so it's using the green, which is RF, to establish the optimum traffic route from that mission unit to the command control. And it's doing the same for the entire network. If you click on one of these red ones, it will tell you, it will list for you the, the, the hops is traveling through. So from, from 08, from mission unit 8 to mission unit 1, we have to go through 7 and 3 and 1. And he's, cu he's counting the number of intermediate links in between. This is a perfect way to analyze um, if, if the network is performing well. And you can also zoom in and then you can see the different highways here or the lanes. So each lane means there's a traffic going through. So let's look at this one, how important it is. So you can see this one is passing two, two main um, routes. This one is probably also important. You can see how many lanes it's carrying. Three lanes. The lower lanes are the ones that have shorter, shorter nodes to travel through. The higher the lane, the longer it is. So more likely for a distant node. Now let's see if this one is ready now. Yes, completed. The search node's completed. So now we can go back here and then they say this one here. Let's refresh it. Hopefully we'll be ready now. It is ready, so I'm gonna shut down the, the snapshot before, and let's look at the snapshot after. So the new thing you notice right away are the blue, the blue nodes. These blue nodes are the range extenders. They are deployed in strategic locations. They are deployed within 50 and 100 meter buffer from the road center line. And they achieve the outcome we want, the desired outcome, which is to interconnect the different clusters and establish one big manet network. So if you click on that, Guy now, you see he's, um, uh, he's a range extended type, RE. And if you look at the number of lanes he's carrying, you expect to carry too many lanes because he's interconnecting clusters. Here you go. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So losing that node means you're gonna lose six, six links. So again, the green lines in the bottom here, they are the physical links, or what we call them layer one, RF links. Now, not all the RF links will be used because they're not optimum in terms of um, number of intermediate nodes or, or throughput. So the, 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 one, the ones that are used here are this one here, the top one, and then these two here. 